Good day. My name is Monique Riemann. I'm a research sonographer at Phoenix Children's Hospital, and I'll be speaking to you today on dynamic imaging for slipping rib syndrome. I'm thankful to the AIUM for this opportunity. I have no disclosures to report. IRB was obtained by our surgical department, and I'd like to thank the, and acknowledge the following physicians that worked on this project with me. Dr. Van Tassel, Dr. Barnes, and Dr. McMahon. So what is slipping rib? SRS is defined as the hypermobility of the anterior ribs, either from disruption of cartilage articulation or congenital deformity that allows for the edges of the eighth, ninth, or tenth ribs to slip, click, or pop as it comes in close proximity or slips under the rib above. Pain occurs from the pinching of the intercostal nerve as the rib slips up. So essentially, we're not all textbook. As a matter of fact, a good many lack this continuity of cartilage, making them predisposed to SRS. Currently, the hooking maneuver is the physical exam used to diagnose SRS. This painful maneuver has all but been replaced at our institution with the development of our dynamic protocol. We started receiving a request to evaluate for SRS from pediatric surgeon in early 2017. As a result, we began to research the topic, determine that limited data existed, and decided to work towards a reproducible protocol which would improve the sensitivity, accuracy, and diagnosis of SRS. Many patients had been struggling with this condition for over a year, with some as much as four years. Their prior imaging included x-ray, CT, MR, nuke med, and even ultrasound. 55% of our patients were athletes with an average BMI of 22.7, and the most common sports were swimming and running. Average age was 17.6 years, and the ratio of female to male, 2 to 1. We did a retrospective review of patients that presented to our institution from March 2017 through April of 2019. Comparisons were made from the physical exam and surgical reports to the dynamic imaging exam. After a focused history was taken, we obtained cine clips of the bilateral ribs in the parasagittal plane at rest and with dynamic maneuvers. Special attention was given to pinpointed pain site. The ribs were imaged with either a linear EL18-4 or 12.5 MHz transducer in a parasagittal plane with sweeping cine clips from posterior to anterior, keeping the rib and cartilage in cross-section transverse plane. Clips began at the mid-axillary line with a view of the targeted rib and the rib above in a transverse axial projection and continues anteriorly sweeping in an arc past rib to rib cartilage and then to the tip of the targeted rib. This is the clip labeled rest. All additional clips are done just before the tip of the targeted rib with dynamic maneuvers performed while the transducer is held in a fixed position. In our search, we noted that Valsalva had been a, used as a tool. Our experience with Valsalva had limited success and we therefore began utilizing other dynamic maneuvers such as the crunch and a focal rib push that we created. <clears throat> as well as any other movement the patient could perform that provoked the symptoms. This is the protocol and worksheet designed for the study. Cine clips were taken at rest to assess the morphology, then a crunch, a push, and if known, a provocative movement. The most common provocative movement is usually a twisting motion. Here are some of the examples of the dynamic maneuvers that we recorded. The clip on the left demonstrates the normal morphology, while the clip on the right shows the eighth rib coming in contact with the seventh rib, and the tip ending underneath, such that at, at rest, it is already a positive exam. Next, we have normal and abnormal crunches. In actuality, we call these mini crunches or partial crunches as only the head and shoulders were lifted up. In the normal crunch, you can see the intercostal muscles contract, 
but the rib cartilage remains separated from each other, while in the abnormal crunch, the rib cartilage can be seen coming in contact with one another and the lower rib slipping under the rib above. Examples of our created push maneuver, we've considered calling it the van tassel after our fellow, now in attending, that came up with it. We found it most successful with either a thumb push or two finger push. Pressure is applied to the lower rib with an inward and upward momentum toward the rib above, documenting any laxity or slipping that may occur. It is important that the patient be instructed to relax their abdominal muscles. Adjustments to imaging and observations of ribs at risk were noted as experience was gained. Ribs at risk were defined as those whose cartilaginous ends were disarticulated and diminutive, as seen by the white arrow, and whose adjacent two superior ribs had a cartilaginous bar between them. That's by the red arrow. Another indicator was increased echogenicity surrounding muscle indicative of inflammation and possible sequela of SRS. 81% of the patients had a clinical diagnosis of SRS. Dynamic ultrasound correctly detected the presence of SRS in 92% of the patients. Both false negative exams for phase one were performed prior to the crunch or push maneuver implementation, while the two false negatives in phase two were due to one exam of poor quality that was not reported as such, and the other that, dot, that did not elicit a positive result. Dynamic ultrasound correctly detected the absence of SRS in 100% of patients. The phase one, phase two results demonstrated sensitivity for push remained the same at 93%. Morphology improved 11% from 77% to 88%, and crunch improved from 13%, improved 13 from 73 to 86%, thus showing that experience and cross-training of staff have been successful. The push maneuver demonstrated the highest sensitivity followed by morphology and then crunch. Dynamic ultrasound imaging of the ribs, particularly with utilization of crunch and push maneuvers, continues to be an effective and reproducible tool for the diagnosis of SRS. In addition to diagnosing SRS, ultrasound has the ability to give the surgeon morphologic data and information on additional ribs that are at risk, thereby assisting the surgeon in the planning stages. It is our hope that this protocol might be adopted by other institutions when patients present with chronic undiagnosed upper quadrant pain that SRS be considered as a possible answer. Thank you for your time and attention.